So I'm going to let you in on a little secret of mine. When it comes to tactics in Football Manager, I don't really know what I'm doing. Don't get me wrong, I understand the basic principles of tactics and how they work, but for me as a Football Manager player, I have a huge over-reliance on just using something like a 4-2-3-1 Gigan Press or a 4-4-2 Wing Play. Now back in FM20, that was fine. I relied on the preset tactics and it won me a streamer showdown. I beat loads of other creators to win a streamer showdown using pretty much a 4-2-3-1 Gigan Press. However, in FM21, when I've been in streamer showdowns, I have been utterly spanked because, quite frankly, I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to making my own tactics. So I am on a quest at the moment to try and make myself better tactically at Football Manager to make myself a better player and to win more streamer showdowns in the future. To do that, I have been relearning tactics, essentially. I've been going through tactics, making my own, and discovering plenty of misconceptions that I've had about tactics and I'm pretty sure loads of you guys will have had about tactics as well. So today's video is going through some of the biggest misconceptions about tactics in Football Manager, where I've been going wrong, and where you guys might have been going wrong as well. Today's video is also sponsored by the One Football app. One Football is the best footballing app out there to keep up to date with all of the latest news, scores, and live updates from around the world. You can follow your favorite teams and get push notifications sent straight through to your phone every time a major match event happens quicker than any other app out there. For me, it's the best football app and I think you guys would love it. So would massively appreciate it if you guys could download it for absolutely free from the top line of the description as it really helps me and the channel out. So let's jump into the game then. I've been playing a save offline with Zenit St. Petersburg and it's been going quite well actually to be fair. We're doing pretty well in the league and the whole point of this is not for me to do well but to learn how tactics work. So the first tactical misconception I've come across is that instructions do not matter at all if your team is set out to play completely differently. Now, to demonstrate this, I've gone very simple and just put one instruction on, which is play out of defense and put it into a 4-4-2 formation. Play out of defense will only work if you have centre midfielders who are willing to drop back and help in the transition of playing out of defense. So the midfielders need to be dropping back to collect short passes from your defenders to then build the ball forward in transition. In this instance, I've got an advanced playmaker and I've got a Mazala. It's a very common combination. A lot of you guys use it. I've seen your tactics that a lot of you guys use it. But if you have an attacking playmaker and a Mazala, for example, playing it out of defense will not work because these roles are not compatible with the tactical instruction. So although you set your team out to play a certain way in the instructions, the roles your players have may actually mean you're not playing the way you want to play. So you've got to really balance the roles and the instructions together, something that I have failed to do in the past. The second misconception is that you haven't yet dropped a like on today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here or left a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. So make sure you do that as well so you don't make any more tactical mistakes. This next misconception is a bit of a two-in-one situation. I love my left backs and my right backs to get forward and put crosses into the area. And for me, I only thought they would do that if they were set to be a wing back or a complete wing back. That is completely wrong. In this save, I have my left back and my right back set to full back and they are still getting forward and putting crosses into the middle. You can even see here on the animation in the description that the full back is getting forward and the full back is putting crosses into the middle. The only difference that I can come across is that a wing back is more attacking minded whereas a full back is more defensively minded. So if you want to have a stronger back line but still have your left back and right back get forward, then just put them to fullbacks, not wingbacks. For years, I have made this mistake. For years, I've got it completely wrong and I've been really bad defensively because I've had wingbacks who just aren't getting back enough. When really, I should have just been playing fullbacks because they still do get forward. To couple into this, I quite like to have my left back and my right back overlap my wingers or inverted wingers or inside forwards to try and get forward to put a cross into the middle. So when I'm in possession, it always made sense to me to just put overlap left overlap right on. Well, that's actually wrong. The overlap left and the overlap right buttons are actually telling your players to hold up play and wait for someone to overlap. So every single time you're getting forward, if you're running with pace, the pace will stop, like the whole team will just stop 
and wait for someone to get an overlap going on the outside. All it's doing is telling a player to wait and look for an overlap, not actually telling a player to go and overlap someone on the outside. And you can even see here on the animation for the fullback, the fullback is overlapping without that instruction being turned on. So the instruction just tells players to wait and look for an overlap, not telling your fullbacks to actually go for the overlap. You'll also notice in my formation that I'm playing an asymmetrical formation. Now, if you know anything about me, I love a good symmetrical formation, just on the grounds that it looks quite nice on paper. So normally I play a 4-4-2 like that. But in this save, I've been playing it like this. Normally I don't like playing asymmetrical formations because to me, I see a huge gap in the field here that my opposition can exploit. However, what I've learned from playing this save is that this shape here means absolutely nothing. If you go to team report and you go to match analysis and you go to individual match analysis, I've set the match to the game that we just played against Stad Rene in the Champions League and I've gone down here to average positions and set average position overall. As you can see, my target man, the number seven, is playing so much deeper than the other striker who on paper is playing right next to him. The attacking midfielder on the left is not actually playing that much further forward than the midfielder on the right. And then because of the roles I've got my centre midfielders playing, there is actually a bit of disparity in the shape of the centre of midfield. So actually, it's all fairly lopsided. And the gap that I once had here on the tactics screen actually now kind of looks like a gap up here instead. When I change average position to without the ball, it looks completely different. It looks like a really weird lone striker system shape. So basically what I'm trying to say is don't read into the shape on the tactics screen too much. What you need to be doing is looking at this match analysis screen to see where your players are actually positioning themselves. This will help massively when it comes to setting yourself up against other teams to play either against the computer or online. The next misconception that I've got is that get stuck in is actually a very good instruction to have turned on. I have always tried to stay away from get stuck in because I always think it's going to guarantee my players get red cards, but that's not actually the case. I'll explain why. In this game against Krasnodar, we won 6-3, which was a fantastic result for us, but we were 2-1 down and not playing particularly well. Every time Krasnodar got the ball, their players were just able to dribble past my defence, get in behind them and take free shots on goal. It was really frustrating. So what I did to try and counter this this was turn on get stuck in and all of a sudden they could not get past my defenders. The reason why is because get stuck in isn't just about sliding in with two feet, it's about just tackling harder, standing up to your man a bit better and actually looking to put a solid tackle in rather than trying to be a bit more cautious and avoid getting a booking. So from my understanding now, if a team is coming at me and dribbling past my defenders all the time, I will press get stuck in so my defenders do tackle harder and yes they may pick up a yellow card or two but it's gonna stop the opposition dribbling past me quite so often, and it should reduce the amount of chances the opposition gets against me when I'm playing defensively. And for the final misconception, we're going to move to the other end of the pitch. The last one was all about defending. This next one is all about attacking, and it's about work the ball into the box, and how actually, it's a pretty rubbish instruction. Now, I used to religiously have work the ball into the box turned on. It makes sense, right? Get the ball into the box, you've got a better chance of getting a shot on goal and scoring. However, work the ball into the box is actually pretty useless unless you're trying to go for a really slow-paced tiki-taka style of play. All it's doing is encouraging players to be patient and pass the ball around until they can find an opening in the middle. The formation that I'm playing right now is very much a direct counter-attacking style of play. Basically, in this formation that I'm playing, I am distributing to my target man. So essentially, my keeper just hoops it to the target man, he nods it down to my other striker who runs in the box and scores goals. That's a very quick, direct style of play. For me, putting work the ball into the box on would be completely counterproductive to that because it's trying to be patient, trying to wait for other players to get into the area and trying to slow it down until we can work a ball into the box and get a shot away. So unless your tactical style is all about patient build-up play, work the ball into the box, in my opinion, should never be turned on. So those are all of my tactical misconceptions that I found so far in the game about my specific style of play. And I think they're gonna be applicable to a lot of you guys out there as well. So if you've learned something today, let me know what it is down in the comment section below. And also leave your own tactical misconceptions down there for future videos that we can make on this topic. If you have enjoyed today's video, make sure you do drop a like on it for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time. Have a good one, goodbye.